Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar. My name is Joachim van der Meule. I'm the secretary with Drops Asia. Um, glad to have you here with, for this webinar, New Approaches to Safe Lifting. Uh, with me are Jeroen van Boxel with Access Group uh, in Norway, uh, Jerry Holstein also in De uh, Denmark, right? And then Mike Cadigan all the way from the US. So uh, Drops Asia a webinar. Actually, I'm also currently in Amsterdam. It's just uh, how things work uh, this, this time, uh, visiting family. Uh, but uh, of course, most of our audience is based in um, in Asia. Uh, so it's early morning for us. I'm glad uh, you're here with, uh, with us. So um, before we get started, I'd just like to um, express our thanks to our sponsors, uh, Billy Pew, Global Gravity, DropSafe uh, and Access. We've got a few uh, of their speakers uh, on uh, today, so you hear more about them. Uh, DropSafe is just sponsoring, uh, but probably most of you know them very well uh, for their uh, netting, uh, barricades and, and, and things like that. Um, and we'll be sharing some links um, in, in the proceedings of, of this webinar. So I'd like to hand the floor to Jeroen, uh, who will help um, uh, with the introduction and managing the Q&A towards the end. Um, after the webinar, there will also be an opportunity to, do, um, uh, to participate in the virtual networking reception, and I'll uh, show how that works later. So Jeroen, uh, it's off to, uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Joachim. I can hope you all can hear me all right. Um, good afternoon, all. My name is Jeroen van Bokstel. I am uh, the sales director at Access Technologies. Um, and like Joachim explained, um, I will be making the introduction um, partly in today's webinar and the link between dropped object prevention and safe lifting operations. Um, I thought to have a quick word about uh, who Access is. Um, we are a service and product provider to the energy and industry sectors, um, currently working with over 650 people in uh, 20 countries, and we are providing quite a wide range of services, uh, many of which are geared to lifting, which I'll come back to in a second. Um, yeah, key details are on the screen. Uh, this year, we celebrated our 25th uh, anniversary, so quite a lot of competence and experience in the, in the realm of lifting. Um, could you give me the next slide, uh, Joachim, please? It goes outside the scope of this webinar to go into detail of all these operations, but it's safe to say that we uh, have replaced pretty much anything that you can replace on a, an offshore oil platform or drilling rig for that matter. Um, preventing dropped objects is a common theme in, uh, in between uh, every or in each of these operations. Um, so in this capacity, I am participating in this, in this webinar and to give you a brief introduction to what actually consists to a safe lifting operation and, and, and how, do we, uh, how do we achieve it. So a lifting operation is considered safe and the operation is executed without damage or near damage to uh, personnel, to assets or to the environment itself. And then, like I mentioned, dropped object prevention is a key item to, uh, to prevent in this, uh, in this context. Um, so there are same, uh, six uh, main components that go into, uh, into a safe lifting operation and the preparation uh, of which First off, the regulatory compliance. To start any lifting operation, you need to have a, a good understanding of which applicable standards and set of safety regulations the operation needs to comply to. Also, we need to obtain the necessary permits and approvals to get the operation safely started. Secondly, uh, we need to look at the method. We need to uh, understand how will can we best uh, execute the lift? Uh, can we use the crane? Can we use off-shelf rigging equipment? What is best suited for uh, for this operation? And we make that determination based on the safety, on the efficiency, and the availability and cost uh, of the project at uh, at hand. Also important to look at is um, is there already a material handling plan available, or do we need to make something ourselves? Um, Secondly, uh, if the operation has been executed before, are there any lessons learned that can be incorporated into this uh, new execution? Moving over to the third uh, bulk, uh, the planning phase, in which we will 
prepare a lift plan uh, that details a step-by-step -step execution and description of the lifting operation. So to make this, we need to know the details of the load, the weight, the size, the shape, stability, um, and also the lifting area. Is there space enough uh, and is it free of obstacles? Um, furthermore, we shall set the means of communication between the team members in the, in the lifting operation. Moving further, competence and experience in the team. Um, does the crew have the necessary certificates um, to, in place to execute the job? I'm thinking of Arata, for example, for rope access, Banksman for receiving uh, uh, loads, uh, and the general safety to enter the site, for example. Secondly, uh, there you need to look at um, the team composition. We shall not send a team only of juniors to uh, to site. It should be a good mix of uh, with the right amount of seniority in the in the team. A very important part of the culture and towards safety um, are the relevant HSE procedures in place for the uh, operation. Does the team have the right attitude to uh, towards safety? How is their uh, participation and contribution to say, to HSE meetings? Um, are we planning toolbox meetings before uh, in, the, in the morning before uh, every day starts? Um, and then last but not least, uh, we're looking at equipment to uh, to execute the operation, um, in which uh, Mike and, and Jerry will explain us more. Um, but also personal protective equipment that is important to uh, enter a safe lifting operation. Um, uh, Mike uh, Kennigan from uh, Billy Pugh will explain us more about a uh, in ingenious way of, um, of uh, IBC, intermediate bulk handling uh, today. So uh, the floor uh, to you, uh, Mike. Thank you. Good day, uh, my name is Mike Cadigan. I'm the, I'm the president Billy Pew Company. Um, you know, many people know Billy Pew from a uh, because of our personnel transfer devices. That's what we've that's what we've made for many many years, and that we're a 65 year old company. Uh, but we uh, we also make quite a few lifting products. And and I started with Billy Pew a little over a year ago, and um, as president of the company. And and what I'm presenting actually is is the first product that that I tackled in my tenure as president and it's a, it's kind of a neat story of how products come to be and how ideas uh, turn into reality and um you know with billy pew because prior to joining billy pew i spent my whole career in offshore drilling um through those my former colleagues and friendships throughout the industry that's what we tapped into for the ideas and to refine it so as we like to say at Billy Pugh, our research and development team actually is the offshore workforce because everything I'm presenting here is, um, is quite honestly been developed by the industry. Um, and we go through a process where, you know, there's a hazard defined and then we have a back and forth iterative process where we take the idea, try to come up with what can we do to solve this hazard, uh, in this case, dropped objects, um, we create these 3D designs for this. And then once we get the 3D design, that enables us to, to really hone in and to share the concept with, with rigs. And sometimes it's teams calls, just like we're talking today and sharing screens and ideas. Then we translate into 2D construction, um, the 2D. And then we go from there to, to building a prototype. And in fact, it's actually these images are the first version of a prototype that uh, that I'm presenting here today. Um, you know, when you go through this process, sometimes prototypes become reality. Sometimes they end up in the corner collecting dust, and uh, you learn from them. So, um, you know, in this particular instance, uh, we're talking about intermediate bulk containers or IBCs. Um, you know, the that could be the tote kind the that you see on the left, um, or the flexible intermediate bulk containers, uh, what we often call them big bags or super sacks. Uh, in those cases, this is what we're what looking to tackle. And the problem was presented to me where, you know, people came to me and said, Mike, we don't, we're lifting IBCs more and more offshore. We just do not have safe lifting products for these. Um, you know, in many cases, as on the picture on the right, we're just putting 
bar rope slings underneath these IBCs and move them around a drilling rig. And it's incredibly unsafe. Uh, there's other products where you have documented incidents where lateral loads because of sloshing fluids have, have led to dropped objects. So we wanted to initially tackle that issue. Um, during the process of tackling that issue, um, it was started to be communicated to me that, uh, you know, people's response were, well, Mike, you know, this, that's great, but our, we're, we're dropping a lot of big bags, uh, you know, in places where there's a lot of sun and UV degradation. Um, when operators send out these big bags to, to rigs, sometimes the handles, the integrity is, uh, is compromised and it's resulting in drop loads. So then we started to look to tackle that issue as well. And these ideas started to come together, uh, quite honestly. And, and what we've got is a combined lifter today. It's a, a combined lifter that you know, incorporates a, an upper lift frame with a, with a four-legged sling with a master link and sublink assembly. Uh, so you have four lifting points, which is good for when you're lifting these totes and bags down into sack rooms uh, on drilling rigs. And, um, and then the, you know, the, the, the frame also provides a lateral load protection. Uh, we, we've designed this, this frame, uh, lifting frame with in two different standards, one being DNB 273 um, and one being ASME uh, B3020. And uh, the, the, only, the only difference that's at the ASME B3020 below the hook lifting standard. So, uh, so we have designs in, in two different two standards. And, um, and we've put this, done this in a way where it's a single lifter that can lift, as you see on the left, an IBC in the tote mode you can lift a big bag in the um, in the in the bag mode, or this because all of these have similar dimensions, similar designs. Uh, this this frame can also lift pallets, as you see on the right. And um, you know, it was during this process of initially looking at the designing this to create an IBC lifter that you know the the drilling contractors I was interfacing with they they said, well, Mike, you know, what if we integrated kind of dropped object protection with, you know, by way of cargo nets? And so what you see in the center there is an image where uh, we can integrate a very simple cargo net as the dropped object protection. And, um, and that became integral to the design. Um, when we looked at how we were going to attach all these lip points, uh, we, we ultimately settled on what's called a, an excavator hook. And um, these excavator hooks, they weld onto the frame, the inside of the frame that encompasses the load of the IBC, um, the, uh, the weld on hook. So that the inside of the frame of that lifts, our lift frame is what we call a two inch by four inch uh, square tubing that, um, that encompasses the load. Uh, we have, as, as you can see on the left here, green painted handles. And that's where, uh, you know, while in the drilling business, we always tell people not to touch a load, but if you have to, uh, we wanted to provide a safe place where you can touch the load. And these weld on hooks are on the inside of the frame. So it protects the hook from, from bumping or, you know, or snagging it in uh, during the lifting process. And, and these hooks provide a, a great amount of flexibility for, for hooking, you know, a thimble die sling uh, in the IBC mode or, um, or, the, or the big bags. So here, what we're looking at here now is the, uh, the lifting in the, the uh, IBC mode. And we utilize a pallet bar that runs underneath the, uh, the hook, underneath the, um, the toad itself, and, um, and with Sherlock hooks that, that link to the pallet bars. While testing this in the field, uh, it became evident that the, the drilling tractor that we did the initial test in, they approached me about in integrating soft slings into it because sometimes totes, they're either brought out in half heights, jammed into a corner, um, with, you can't actually physically access uh, the tote to, to get a pallet bar in there, or sometimes these totes are actually quite flimsy and in time, you'll notice them. I mean, when you go on a drilling rig, they're often squat and damaged. Where actually putting a pallet bar underneath is is almost impossible. So what we settled on was a a, a three inch 
three ply polyester uh, soft sling that you can run under the tote, hook onto the weld on slings. Um, the, each of these slings in a basket configuration has uh, over 24,000 pounds each in lifting capacity. So we decided if we're gonna use soft slings, let's do it with a massive safety factor. And in this case, it's about a 50 to one safety factor uh, because soft slings, um, soft slings you know, are quite versatile, but uh, if they're not cared for, they, they, there can be issues. But the drilling contractor that, that came up with this idea actually quite, quite liked using them. And uh, one of the, the features, the reason they, they like using them is the versatility. And what they found is they eliminated about half of their basket entries. So these totes have a tendency to come out in baskets. Um, you've got to get a roust about into the basket to, to fish that sling through there and, and to wrap around. And, uh, and what they found is when they're backloading, um, a roustabout can stand outside that basket, quickly unhook the sling, they can, they can pull away, and, uh, and they eliminated about half of their, their basket entries. So it, it actually proved to be quite versatile in, in that respect. And you, you'll notice that the tote kind of sits down around the, um, around the, the tote, the, the, uh, the frame. And the reason that is for the for lateral loads. If you are lifting and you're lifting fluids, there's a considerable potential for lateral loads and then dropping dropped objects. And that's what we uh, we aimed to to create the frame that would en encapsulate the load. Building on this, we uh, you know we we set we looked at big bags and a configuration of the hooks so that we can accommodate different all the different sizes of uh, of big bags. And, and Billy Pugh has been making uh, cargo nets for you know 60 plus years, so it was it was a very simple, um, very simple add-on for us to be able to, you know, to utilize a cargo net for for this lifting purpose. Um, now, arguably, there's a, a small element of double handling um, that when you in order to install the cargo net, because what you need to do is install the big bag on our lift on the lifting frame, you lift up about six inches up off the ground, pull the cargo net underneath. And because the weld on hooks are on the inside, you just clip, clip, clip four, four times. And then you are lifting with the dropped object protection uh, of the big bag. Uh, so if these handles were to break, cause that's where we're seeing most of the incidents occur, then you have that it uh, the bag will then just be cut by by the cargo net. So the driller, as we you know, we uh, the, here's some more images here of it in uh, with the protection. You can see the image of the of the handles of the and the uh, handles of the cargo net and the handles of the big bag latched onto the the excavator hooks. And interestingly, as we went through this process, um, the driller. We, we sent out a cargo net uh, for field testing that, that looks like it, like it is in the right, all stretched out. But then the driller came back and uh, approached us about lifting into hoppers because they had an incident at the, uh, during the field test uh, in their fleet of dropping a bag um, as they were going in over the mixing hopper. So that led to a, a process of sharing back and forth dimensions and, and images of, of mixing hoppers. And ultimately what we settled on was a cargo net that has an 18 inch hole um, in the bottom. So that hole is, is small enough where the, there will not be a dropped object. So if a handle breaks, the, the cargo net is catching the load, but it's large enough that you can go in over the hopper as you see on the right and, um, and not damage the integrity of the uh, of the cargo net, so the uh, so that's that's an option. So that, that um, as that driller you know, outfitted their fleet, they bought two cargo nets, one with the hole and one without, uh, with each of their lifting frames. And and as you'll notice, actually on on the picture on the right, in this case, there the um, this driller has a preference for utilizing the the, the vertical slings for the IBC lifting. They, they actually like keeping those slings on um, on the lift frame for big bags. And uh, that that actually provided them a, an extra level of, of versatility for raising the frame up, uh, number one. And, and the other thing is the, the 
various sizes of big bags, it, it allowed more versatility with the odd shaped bags and lifting them safely. So, so here's a, an image of, of it uh, in a pallet mode and you can utilize the, uh, the cargo net for to protect against the dropped objects of, of lifting as it with pallets as well, because it's the exact same bars and, and slings utilized for, uh, for tote lifting. And we've had this uh, we've had this product now in the field since uh, since May of this year, and um, and it's a first fully commercialized uh, uh, lifting product uh, with dropped object pr uh, protection, and it's uh, it's gaining traction with uh, with more and more interests and in, uh, and and orders coming in. So it's a it's it's a neat neat idea, neat project that has been kind of brought to us by the industry and uh, through a collaborative approach. We've uh, We've uh, brought this product, this product to life to uh, to further uh, reduce risk of dropped objects, and that's uh, that's my presentation. Thank you. Jeroen, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mike. Very well done. Uh, maybe a short uh, Q and A already now. Um, we'll can have a larger uh, extensive Q&A session after the, also the second uh, presentation. But if there's any questions already, we can uh, we can take them now. Just type them in the in the chat. Yeah, just type them in the chat, whether you're uh, on LinkedIn or, or uh, YouTube or you're logged into our website. Uh, there should be a, a chat form uh, where we can uh, see your questions. Uh, maybe you see something come in here. Um, what changes, uh, Mike, were made after field testing? Well, what um, after the field testing, uh, we actually installed some, uh, changed the bumper bars uh, on the on, on the inside of the frame because you had to create bumpers uh, to protect the uh, protect the inside of the uh, of the hooks uh, relative relative to the tote. So that was uh, that's that's really the, the the main change that we made. Uh, um, and and after after the field testing, and then that really uh, interestingly enough was uh, about the only change uh, we made after after that particular uh, uh, particular field test. That and the integration of the uh, the soft slings, the soft slings with the um, with the Kodura coating, which which proved to be actually uh, a great addition to the to the, the suite, the lifting suite. All right, thank you for that. And I see also here why are the hooks three mega three uh, metric tons? Well, that's that's an interesting question, and, and the very simple answer is three is three tons is is overkill because if you got four lifting points, you're lifting with four, uh, you know, three ton hooks. Uh, with a tote that at max is designed to, uh, you know, to, to hold at 2,500 kg. So it's overkill, but uh, dimensionally that, that three ton hook actually works uh, the best when it comes to, uh, to putting on the thimble die or of the, or the soft slings. And um, just dimensionally, it's, it's easier to work with. And, uh, and that's, that's what we settled on. So we got overkill and at Billy Pew, we tend to kind of overbuild, overbuild our products by design. <laughs> Understood. Good. Also, can you hang the net from the same hook as the bag? Absolutely, because it's a, where it's a three-ton hook. Like I mentioned, dimensionally, it has a, a large eye there and a large, large saddle. Um, so it's a, and it has ton, loads of lifting capacity. So you can actually utilize the the handle of the big bag and the uh, and that rope on, on the cargo net on, on the same hook, no problem. Good. Uh, more uh, questions related to the hooks. Uh, why are there eight hooks? Um, eight hooks. That the reason we settled on eight is because um, we studied all the different sizes of big bags, and uh, and they they range quite a bit. And so what you don't want to do is have, have um, put any stress on any of the handles of the bags as you're lifting. So that just allows you uh, to for different configuration of bag sizing to to be able to hang it appropriately. Okay, good. Um, I think that's it. Ah, now one more. Who supplies the excavator hooks? Um, the excavator hooks uh, in the images you're looking at there, they were Van Beast products. 
but um, you know, we 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 offer options in Van Beast or or Crosby uh, as well, um, and that because that they're the two preferred products uh, by the industry. But uh, but Van Beast and product uh, and Crosby are the two two main suppliers. Right, excellent. Um, one more question here um, from Hilmi. Um, oh, my screen is flickering. From Brunei Shell, uh, does the safety net go with the inspection? Uh, will go through inspection treated similar to lifting gear? So, is it a, a like inspected like a form of lifting gear? Um, yes, the short answer is yes. I mean, it in and of itself, it's a lifting product, and um, it's in its rope. So, um, you know, it's it's the same same uh, similar rope that we use, you know, for our personnel, the old traditional personnel. Uh, uh, transfer devices, the old baskets, and uh, and so those that rope needs to be inspected on a periodic basis because it's a fiber. You want know, to make sure there's no damage done to it and that it's uh, in good shape uh, and regular for use. Uh, so it's it's a lifting product in itself, and you need to treat it that way. Understood. Right. Thank you very much, and also thank you, Helmi, for uh, for your question. Um, I think we uh, we can go forward with the second presentation of uh, of this morning this afternoon jerry holstein from uh, global gravity out of denmark um, they have brought a safer and more effective method for pipe handling uh, to market uh, it's called uh, tube block ttrs and jerry is going to tell us all about it the floor is yours jerry good morning ladies and gentlemen um, i'm jerry holstein i'm the uh, global operations manager based in Espere in denmark for global gravity which is the manufacturer and supplier of the TubeLock product. Um, if I could have the first slide, please. Uh, sorry, would you like the slide or the video first? No, the slide first. We'll do okay. the slides first, followed by the video. Yeah. Just, uh... There we go. For many, many years in the oil industry... Um, sorry, next slide. <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. For many, many years in the industry, we, we used to send stuff out on pallets um, with cloth slings around it. We had drops all the time. The industry moved on to containers where everything was put in containers, secured safely, safety nets, etc., to the standard we use today, um, which has given us a, a, a safe way of moving that, that cargo offshore. Next slide, please. So for many, many years, we have bundled pipe in wire rope slings. And we still, unfortunately, do that today um, with all its inherent problems. But there are other options. And one of these options is the TubeLock TTRS system, which you can see on the boat deck there on the right hand side, where the product and the tubulars are locked into our system with numerous advantages. Um, but if we go to the next slide, I'll talk about the drops advantages. <coughs> Excuse me. So. We've always had the problem when we bundle pipe in wire rope slings that the protectors become loose and in road transport and also lifting on and offshore boats to rigs, the protectors become um, a dropped object falling off. We've had inherent problems with pipe slipping within bundles if they're not done up properly. So the pipe slips and that becomes a major dropped object. We also have wire sling failures, which it normally allows the whole bundle to fall. We also have stored energy within a bundle pipe. Stored energy is not a dropped object, object, but it's a safety issue using with slings. So as you can see on the slide on the left, that is a tube lock bundle, in this case of, of pup joints. None of the joints are touching each other, so none of the protectors have come undone during the, the, the procedure of putting the pipe in a safe way to lift it offshore. None of the pipe can slip within that frame. They're bolted together to 150 Newton tons with bolts through the middles. As you can see on the, on the right-hand slide, that is a bundle of nine and five eighths pipe hanging by one set of slings, no pipe movement, no dropped objects, everything dandy and safe the way that we want it to be in the industry in today's way. Um, this system has numerous other advantages for onshore workers and offshore workers, but it's not a uh, doesn't fall under drop. So I'm not going to go into all of those advantages that it has. But if people would like to know more about the product at a later date, be more than happy to show you many advantages against slinging of pipe. 
Um, next slide, or is it the video next? Okay, we are LEA, DMV, NORSOC, um, ISO 9000, LOLA approved, our training guys and our service engineers are LEA members as well. Um, we're all certified. We operate now within all the North Sea. We operate in the Southern North Sea. We have uh, representation in Brazil. We have representation in the Middle East with ongoing contracts, also in Australia and New Zealand. So we have quite a, quite a coverage throughout the world and uh, it's gaining pace as people realize the safety factors of this product. I think we could run the short video next if uh, that's okay with you guys. Yep. Global Gravity presents TubeLock, a modern and far more efficient way of transporting tubulars to an offshore drilling site. TubeLock allows you to safely transport any pipes from pipe yard to the rig's pipe deck. The TubeLock system ensures that pipes are stacked safe and secured on the supply boat and takes up less space than other methods of transport. But TubeLock is not just a transport system. It will significantly reduce operational time used for both cranes and supply boats, as you can lift the pipes directly from supply boat and onto the pipe deck. The pipes are stacked in running order, ready to be run in whole from TubeLock. No need to measure, drift and lay out pipes. A tremendous time and safety improvement for rig personnel. The system holds several international certifications and is excellent for regular OCTG, drill pipe as well as sand screens, high alloy tubulars and sub-assemblies. The backload for tube block is simple and highly organized and it takes up a fraction of the space compared to other methods as the entire system is flat packed neatly into a small container. Tube lock will save you time, money, and CO2. Faster, safer, greener, better. That shows you. Short video. Don't want to, don't want to be selling, but just explaining the uh, the safe part of it and uh, how we how we've eliminated um, quite a few dropped objects coming out, um, and just making it a safer way of transport and pipe for the industry. Very simple. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. You're welcome. Very good. Um, any questions for, for Jerry at this time? <coughs> yeah, so please be reminded you can put them in the, either the YouTube chat, uh, uh, LinkedIn chat, or if you're on the website, uh, put it on the um, chat there as well. Yeah, I see here something coming in. Uh, what kind of pipe materials, Jerry, are supported to be used with tube lock TTRS? What kind of pipe materials? Yeah, like uh, chrome or carbon steel, or is everything supported? Every, every, anything. We we do uh, normal grade steels all the way to, up to high alloys. There's because the uh, the components that are in touch with the steel are aluminium. There's no uh, there's no uh, corrosion or anything. They're perfectly safe for any material. Everything. Okay, thank you. Chrome, alloys, everything. And have there been any improvements incorporated over the 12 years you have marketed this product, um, potentially driven by, um, yeah, by, by, by work in the field? Like, have there been any LTIs or? We've, we've, we've continually improved the product. And as, as Mike has said, he's, he's relied on the offshore industry coming back with feedback. We, we do a lot of questions and answers with customers, clients, um, my engineers are sure listening to, to, to the, the people on the, on, the, on the rigs. How does it work better? What can we do better? So we have improved um, over the 12 years. We've mod made, made some modifications, but quite unusually, um, the owner of the company who invented the product came out with pretty good product from the beginning out of the box. So the basic configuration of it and the acceptance by DMV has stayed pretty standard, but we've made, we have made some improvements. We have not had an LTI. I'll be honest with you, we've had some incidents where people have not followed the instructions and put the product together properly. Um, and that caused an issue on one rig. There was no, no lost time or anything, no accident. But, you know, it's like anything. If you operate it correctly, it's safe because that's the way it's designed. Um, if you deviate from, from the, the procedure, um, you, can, you can turn anything into an unsafe thing. But no, no, no LTIs. 
exactly uh, improvisation is uh, yeah, the, the start point of where it goes wrong. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, a question here from Theo. Is there a limitation in uh, diameter size of jute log in stack? Um, and what are the available range of diameter sizes? Thank you. Okay. We do from two and three eighths all the way up to 20 inch, which includes just about every size that you can imagine. Um, right through all the tubing, the casing, the draw pipe sizes. Um, we've, we can manufacture any OD that you want to do between two and three eighths and uh, 20 inch. We've, we've done different ends in special uh, sub assemblies for uh, completions that people have wanted. It's very versatile. Um, each profile is pipe specific of the size, so it's not interchangeable. So if you order four and a half inch, that's what will fit four and a half inch. We cannot put a, a five inch and a four and a half inch, which is uh, which is uh, obvious. But uh, we do every single size and more than the oil field call for. And we can do from uh, range two all the way up to range three. We've packed 47 foot pipe recently for a, for a client here. It's uh, very versatile. All right, thank you. And Theo, thank you for your question. Anything else for Jerry or for uh, Mike or me? I have a question, uh, Jerry. Uh, you mentioned some, some user error. Um, what, what kind of training do you provide to, to crew to um, set this up? Traditionally, we always sent an engineer out either to the, if we were going to license a, a, a company to pack it in a pipe yard, we go out and do extensive training with them. Um, we issue certification, et cetera, through our training program. Um, or we go offshore and we can uh, train the offshore crews on how to unpack it and get the best utilization out of it. Um, with the COVID era, era we went into animations. Um, we successfully um, ran two or three projects. One was in Trinidad, another one down in Australia, where we did remote training, both onshore and on, on offshore. We have quite an extensive training program for people. Um, I should also mention that uh, if you take a, a tube lock package of pipe, you also get an offshore toolbox with all the tools that you need to safely unload it and reload the system back together. That all comes pass and parcel. But uh, if anybody wants to know more about the training, I mean, please contact me. I'll uh, be happy to share the videos and what, and what we do. And we continually improve that as well um, with, with, client, uh, with clients um, input. They're the people who have to use it. We have to listen to. Yeah. Okay. But if anybody has anything else now or uh, later on, please contact me. I'd be glad to uh, glad to help out with whatever you whatever you need to know. Yeah. We'll uh, put your contact details in the. Um... Uh, uh chat as well as as the proceeding Appreciate with that. the webinar yeah thank you um Jeroen, do you have any more questions not at this time no nope. thank you okay so while we uh while others perhaps are thinking of some questions let me just uh, quickly show uh what we're doing next so for those of you who are logged into the website uh, you'll notice that underneath the webinar there's another screen uh, where you can log into the drops metaverse this is our kind of uh, experimental networking reception uh, you can join using an avatar and it kind of looks like like this it's part of the drops uh, training but uh, on the website all all you can do is is, is in networking if you like to have a look at the training environment you need to download the uh, full application um, but basically i think someone is there already <laughs> uh, that is um philippe uh, valentim and so um I don't know, but that's kind of the point of this 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 webinar uh, of this networking reception that you join this environment and meet meet new people. What's important though is that when you uh, want to talk to other people, you need to take a uh, position at one of these tables uh, to to interact with others. Yeah. So I'm not sure if Philippe is hearing me via the webinar, but that's what you can do. All right. I think I, I, think I know Philippe. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, that's that's the um, a networking reception. Um, so any um, any uh, questions before we move there and before we close? 
If not, um, well, I'd like to express my thanks again to the speakers, Jerry, uh, Mike and, and Jeroen uh, for sharing their insights. Um, uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Billy Pew, uh, Global Gravity, DropSafe and Axis um, for, for supporting these, these webinars. Um, and um, yeah, I'd like to thank you all for, for participating, asking your questions and um, yeah, joining and hope to see you again uh, here in the future. Um, yeah, to that extent, on, on the same website, uh, we have a short evaluation form. I appreciate if you could fill that in, just give your feedback. Also like to hear what, what kind of topics would like to, you'd like us to cover in the future. So thank you very much. And I uh, will wish you, um, wish you a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it, Charles. Nice to meet you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.